I had to go on and take it down some. Speaking of great beer, man, watch it today, man. Oh, man, look at that. <laughs> Guys, good, good evening. How's everybody? Is, is that the oh, Christian Rescue say? Mission? Birthday guy. <laughs> hey, happy birthday. Uh, How y'all doing? Yeah, happy everybody. birthday. Woo, what a day. It's been so busy. It's been a blessing, but it's been a tough day. Very 21. busy. Day. Good to 21 see you. again, sir. 21 again. <laughs> well, call it that if you want. That's fine with me. I'll take it. <laughs> Deacon Johnson, Brother Ware. All right. Um, I think Dokes is in the facility, Othello, Brother William, Willis Robinson. Hey, man, it's good to see all of y'all. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so hey, much. Brother, like, you look like you was on a Pettis Bridge. <laughs> see, wow. with, with, with Lewis and all of them. <laughs> hey, Brother Johnson, I know you know history better than I do, but uh, I wasn't there. <laughs> No, I mean, look, when I look at the uh, tie, you know. I, <laughs> like, come off of Green Acres. Hey, I'm, I'm, yeah. just, I'm accept, <laughs> accepting the territory. I said, you know what? I'm going to go join them. You can't beat them, join them. Hello. Yeah, hey, but, well, what you doing, man? What do you mean, what am I doing? I'm just getting older. Oh, you, you celebrating big time today, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, I got one in my closet, man. Like I wish I would tried it 10 years ago. It's very comfortable. It's got a million pockets, and it's easy to get in and out of. <laughs> man, you got enough pocket to hide a Santa Claus in there. <laughs> <laughs> very Good much evening, so. Brother. What's going on, Willie? Brother Joe, I apologize you, and I think Brother Ware called me, too. I, I couldn't get to it. I've been so so dra just, just drained that they're doing so many things, so I apologize, gentlemen. It wasn't like y'all didn't matter. Well, that's okay. I went on drink one for you anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I caught. I just caught that. All right. Sounds good. Well, hey, gentlemen, I will not try to keep you keep. Bro, it Scott. We want to get started tonight. Uh, we're calling tonight our 2020 Kingdom Man Academy uh, closing conference. If you don't mind, we can say in that closing conference. And we're going to start, uh, uh, Brother Isaac, if you don't mind, sir, getting us started with uh, whoever going to do our scripture. And I pray you got all these deacons and brothers here. So, hey, use them. <laughs> it's fine yes. with me. Uh, evening, brothers. Good evening. Hope Good evening. everyone had a nice holiday and a safe holiday. Uh, for your hearing this evening, I have chosen uh, Ecclesiastes as our scripture. And I would ask uh, Brother Willis, would you mind leading us in prayer? Sure. Thank you, sir. Uh, brothers, hear ye these words. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck what was planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing. A time to gain, a time to lose, a time to keep, a time to throw away, a time to tear, a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to, to speak. Verse 8 reads, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. For your hearing, I've read the first eight verses of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. First eight verses of Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his mighty word. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, our Father, we come again to say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for being the God that you are, yes. that you've allowed us to come again into your presence. We thank you, Lord, for the studies that we've had thus far, and we pray that on tonight you would bless the speakers to say and do things that will be pleasing in your sight. I want to thank you for bringing us towards the end of this year in our study. Mm -hmm. Thank you for what our ears have heard and our eyes have seen. Mm -hmm. We pray for every brother on this line tonight and those who are even on their way. We pray for each of our families that you will continue to bless us with such blessings we stand in need of. Help us to be the men that you're calling for these last and evil days as we head towards the end of the year. Mm -hmm. We pray for our pastor that you continue to crown his head with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word. That every time he stands before your people, he will preach and teach your uncompromising gospel. I want to pray for Pastor Washington and both their families that you continue to keep Pastor Washington in a mighty way. 
Continue to help him to be all that you've called him to be. And we thank you now for another year of his life that he is celebrating a birthday today. Continue to bless the leadership of Lily Grove and bless every church door that stands up within your name and every God-called preacher that proclaims your gospel. Bless Brother Ware tonight and Brother Pastor Washington as they both come before us to give us this word tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And thank you, Brother Robinson, to all the brothers again. I want to thank you all for making my day this day special. I'm certainly celebrating 5-3. Some of y'all got shoes older than that, but that's okay. I'm glad <laughs> to be around. Still glad to be around. Just the same. And so you all, as a, as a company of brothers and as a fellowship, you all have made the day very special. I'm just glad to be here. So hopefully everybody's doing well. Hopefully you had a fantastic uh, week of Thanksgiving last week as well. Tonight, I've labeled tonight as our conference closing. That means tonight when we're done, we're going to take a break. We'll just go ahead and end up uh, uh, this year tonight and pick up in January uh, when, when we hit the ground running uh, to get us started again. We have started this year off a couple of ways, but one in particular, we've been dealing with Tony Evans' book, No More Excuses. And during this year, um, we, we dealt with one chapter titled, No More Hiding Behind the Past. Another mm -hmm. chapter, No More Holding Back. Another chapter, No More Weak Leadership. Another chapter, No More Going Through the Motions. No More Compromising Your Integrity. And then our last current study from, chap from November, Brother Johnson, No More Sifting Through the Rubble. And I thought about that kind of, Tonight is uh, we we focus on closing this thing out. I guess we're going to call it a conference because I want you to participate in some of the discussion that we're going to talk about here. No, Kingdom Men's Academy 2020 closing conference. That's what we want to talk about. Well, that's our heading for tonight. Okay. During 2020, the the No More Excuses by Tony Evans study has has been very fruitful and on point to help us grow into understanding the Bible as our compass for living, the Bible as our compass for living, and an x-ray for better understanding our nature as men. And the book, coupled with the Bible, is a very useful tool. So hopefully that's an accurate statement about this year as we've gone through No More Excuses. Not only has it acquainted us with the thinking and the nature of man, but when we put life with the Bible, things make more sense. We, we can go further and better when we couple life with the Bible and study of Scripture. Tony Evans does a great job of that, and we've gone through all these different chapters. And I don't know which, which chapter meant the most to you, but I think each one of them hit us somewhere. Each one of them addressed us somewhere in helping us to form. It, this is about forming a Christianity, helping us to form in our Christian walk. No more sifting through the rubble was our last chapter. And the question, and it's more rhetorical, but if you got a response, I'll take it. How do we avoid, how do we avoid having to sift through rubble as a men's ministry during these vital times with such favorable opportunities for men's ministry? Okay, let me say that again for I understand. As 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 these seasons are changing, I think it's fruitful opportunities, that fruitful ground, and the times are just right for men's ministries to be vital, but if we continue to, 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 to not aim at anything, if we have no goals, if we continue to perhaps do like we've done, we will find ourselves sifting through the rubble. So for a moment there, what say you, what, what, are, what, how do we avoid, how do we avoid sifting through the rubble? How do you, what are your, some of your thoughts? Because we brought up a lot of stuff this year from this book, Getting Rid of Excuses, but I want to hear you, how do we avoid in your thinking, how do we avoid having to sift through the rubble in 2022 and say, man, we missed another good year to do better in ministry? What say you? Pastor Washington, I, I, I would say uh, that you don't go back and waste time looking at what did I do wrong. You just oh. keep moving forward. So that. you can't park on the past, huh? You can't park on the past. I like the way you said that. Okay, I like the way you said it. Okay, <laughs> very good. Anybody else? How do we avoid? How do we avoid uh, sifting through the rubble? November twenty twenty one. Say, man, this was a good chance, but we haven't made any ground, perhaps, or we haven't uh, 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 
improved, uh, you know, have, what say you? And, and uh, just to pick it back on what he said, um, it's a chance for us to not turn our heads on opportunities to, you know, uh, give the word or, or, or talk about Jesus and look back and say, man, we had so many times to talk about him now when we needed more now than we've ever needed him. Wasting and, opportunities, huh? Right. Very good. Oh, I like those things. Anybody else? Just have some off-the-head thoughts. Well, Rem Washington, he can I, personally, I, I don't think that uh, we should avoid sifting through the rubble because, uh, to me, the rubble means that somebody is in a you know, bad way, scrap heap, whatever you may want to call it. And uh, as men, we need to be restoring others. And so I don't want to avoid sifting through the rubber, but, at the, at the, at, but I also want to have a goal that the men who have, uh, you know, uh, recovered or, or men who are strong and, and want to do some work, we need a goal. We need work to do because if we just be stagnant and always, you know, and I'm, that's what I'm saying. I've been saying a while that, you know, I don't want to just study, study, study and teach, teach, teach. I think that eventually we have to put application to it. I agree. Okay, cool, cool. So Brother Johnson said, and sifting through the rubble ain't all bad, but, but at some point we don't want to, because you have to evaluate, I think Brother Johnson said, you got to make evaluations and nobody's talking about perfection here, but we need to identify goals and, 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 and go after them. Is that good enough, Brother Johnson? Right. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Good. 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 I like those thoughts, gentlemen. We'll go further then. Okay. Can you guys see that still? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, wait a minute. Well, it was there. <laughs> I'm getting like, just hold on a second. I'm sorry, I accidentally closed it. Okay, here we go. Screen share. Okay. Yeah. Can y'all see that now? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh oh. What's going on? Okay, sorry. So our question was, how do we avoid having to sift through rubble as men's ministry during these vital times with such favorable opportunities for ministry? Favorable opportunities for ministry, I believe. I think as a men's ministry, we can avoid rubble sifting in these vital times during the favorable opportunities of 2021 by first considering, considering the inspiration of scripture. Does the scripture offer us any guides in, in how to deal with that? And I think it does. Let's look at, for example, um, let's look at, let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 through 15. The scripture is already there, but I just want you to look at it for a second and consider these things. Okay. Here's what the verse says. It says, as Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people, or fishers of men. This is the NIV version. At once they left their nets and they followed him. Okay? That fits the call of the church, doesn't it? That fits our calling as kingdom men, that the king has come, and he's summoned us, and he's called us to do what? What does this verse tell us that he's called us to do? Look for men. Oh, you. Very good. Fishes of men. To follow out, to follow him. Good. And follow him. Very good. And in modern times, how does that fit in 2020, 2020 2021? How does that fit? What would that look like? To, to leave behind the things that we're more concerned about. Uh, our jobs, if it's interfering with what he called us to do. Very good. Very good. 
So he's telling them to prioritize what he's doing or what he's asking them to do, right? Amen. Very good. How does that look in 2021? In 2020, rather, this time, how, how does that look? What would that look like? And I think the pastor brought out a great illustration on yesterday when he was preaching. That's, that's a funny word for that term. Starts with an E. <laughs> Evangelize. Yeah, yeah. I think this is a call to evangelism, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's telling them, first of all, Scripture tells us, as kingdom men, as believers, to make sure we answer the call, and that's to be fishers of men, to, to help win the loss. That's what fishers of men mean. But notice there's another verse of scripture that I want to couple with this thing, recollect in our recollecting, recollecting, recollection of the scriptures. Here's another scripture, John 21, 15, which we dealt with extensively last month with Brother Johnson, what well, this month in John 21, back to Peter, back to Jesus. Mm -hmm. It says, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus says, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus says, take care of my sheep. Uh -huh. Third time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you really love me? Do you love me? Peter was hurt. Because Jesus asked him three times, but he says, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, well, feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. And the last part of that is Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death that Peter would do. But he says, in the end, follow me. Does that sound anything like Matthew chapter 4 we just looked at? Mm -hmm. In some ways it does. In some ways it don't. How do they look alike? You, you must deny yourself and follow him. Uh, in other words, whatever other things you got going on, then you need to put that aside and become a follower of Christ. Cool, cool. It goes with dedication and commitment as well. They walked away from their livelihoods to follow him. They had to be dedicated to their livelihood, first of all, to feed their families. And when Jesus told them to follow me, there was an undying commitment dedication that they had to the fellowship of Jesus Christ, which is what we're saying, he, even for Peter right now. Peter said three, three, answered him three times, you know I love you. Peter was committed to following him, whatever the cost. Right. Very good. In the previous uh, uh, passage that you looked at, uh, there's more of a general call because he's, he's talking to a group, but, but here he's addressing the specific needs of Peter. Same call, uh, same call to ministry, but there's specific obstacles that Peter has to overcome in order to be able to carry out um, uh, God's mission. Very good, very good. And there's a strong difference between the first call and this one as well. And notice how the second call is saturated with him asking him, do you really love me? Right. The first call, there's no question about whether they love him. Notice that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to some extent, what they needed to do was a sign of their love. And, but, but the problem was, no, it was no problem. It was a general call to evangelism, whereas this one seemed to be a little more specific. It seemed to deal with, there's a different animal we're talking about, too, if I can say that. <laughs> yeah, I think I see motives there, too. Tell, talk about it, Brother Ware. I think that one of the key things I've seen in that is, is uh, he asked Peter, you know, do you love me? Yeah. And that resonates throughout a whole lot through that passage. And I think he was saying that, Peter, if you love me, there ought to be a response to your love for me. And that response that Jesus was calling Peter to was to feed his sheep. If yeah. you love me, feed my sheep. Cool. Which brings to my slightly another point, though. I can do the work of God and not really love him. That's right. But you with the intimate love for God, I'm intimately concerned about what he's concerned about, and that's what his, his sons, his daughters, his sheep. And so he transitions from fishing, which is hunting, if you don't mind me saying that. There's a need to hunt, all right. 
but he changes here to say it's it's time for farming. There's fishing and then there's farming, if you will. There's there's shepherding and there's a strong difference there. So to go back to my initial initial thought about trying to avoid sifting through the rubble, scripture tells us one way we can do that is make sure our efforts are pointed in the right direction. So I asked you another question, and that is, if I can get to, okay, here we go. Can you guys see that? Yes. Okay. Jesus initially tells fish, Peter to go fishing, a uh, fish, right? And Peter says, I'll do it. They, they all do it. But then he changes the assignment. He later reassigns Peter to begin shepherding or farming, okay? Question. Which of these directives seem more the call of God on our campus for this day and this time? Farming. 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 Why? Why not fishing? Well, you've got to fish already on our campus. You just need to uh, clean them, clean them up, and get them ready for discipleship. But we need to, we need to go out away from the campus and fish and farm the land so that we could have substance when we get them. Mm-hmm. Do, do you see a need for fishing? Yes, sir. Right yeah, uh, you most definitely did. Right. Mm. Right. Um, so, so he didn't stop us from fishing at all. That's not the case, is it? No. no. But but you guys, I have to agree with you all. Doesn't it seem like one seems a lot more useful, needful the, uh, for this season of what we're talking about? Fishing. It's clear that this, this call for this campus is still farming as much as it is fishing. But mm -hmm. that, that needs to be an attention turn to farming. There's, there's another piece of that scripture. I didn't highlight it. But when Jesus first calls Peter and the disciples, and I think it's in Mark, where they go fishing, remember the net breaks? I've talked about this before. Right. The net breaks. That's a sign of poor stewardship. That's a sign of carelessness. Even though it was just a, it was a, it was a haphazard event, but notice in this story, Peter drags the whole net to shore without losing any one of them. That's a portrait for us, that, that if God is kind enough to give us fish, the portrait of, of, of theology is to make sure the fish makes it to shore. Mm. Amen. I'm making Amen. sense. Yeah. So, so with all the fish that he's sending this to our peripheral as a ministry, at some point we got to start farming. Amen. If we, if we don't farm... That's great that the fish come this way, but we got to start farming. That's, that's, all, that's all I'm proposing. Go ahead. Go right may, ahead. May I use, I use the word farming. Mm -hmm. The word I like to use is cultivate. Cultivate. It, okay. is, that, is that synonymous with uh, farming? I, I think Jesus says when we're dealing with sheep, that's another word for shepherding, right? Uh-huh. I think they all can mean the same thing. Farming, cultivating, shepherding, I don't think they contradict it, if you will. Gentlemen, any thoughts on that? Because I, I think it's I think we're saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it's gathering, you. holding, and maturing whatever it is that God has put in our possession. But well, here's here's another word, Reverend Washington. What about discipleship? Absolutely. Doesn't that is that syn synonymous with farming, shepherding? Absolutely. Cultivating? Yes, sir. We, we're team teaching now because he's killing us. That's exactly right. That's a perfect term. And he tells us to make disciples, doesn't he? Uh-huh. Yeah. And so we ought to be consumed with evangelism, but that's not the only concern of God. Out of love for God, we want to preserve and protect the fish, if you will, or the sheep or the lambs that he gives us uh, or put in our possession. And now I'm going somewhere with that. But, but notice in what Jesus says to Peter, and Brother Johnson did a magnificent job bringing those things out here in his team this month, but there's lamb and then there's sheep. That's right. And he says, do what? He doesn't say, catch the lamb or feed my sheep. Or he didn't say, feed my sheep, my lambs and catch the, the sheep. He says, do the same thing to both of them. He says, feed right. my lambs, feed my sheep. In other words, disciple, care for, uh, cultivate, farm. He's saying, do the same thing with both. 
Yeah. Reverend Washington. Go ahead, Brother Johnson. You remember I brought out the fact that the different uh, questions or uh, the words that he used, there was a play on love because it was a different type of love. Absolutely. You know, do you phileo me? Do you phileo me? And then do you agape me? Yeah. Mm. And how do the differences of the names that he's given us matter to the, to the cultivating and development of sheep with what he's telling Peter? How do they differ? What's the difference and what matters? And that's not just well, Johnson, but since he brought it up. Well, I want to ask this question. What's the difference between a sheep and a lamb? Time. The age. Age. I would assume. Yeah, I think so. So one is probably more mature than the other. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Correct. Well, let's let's talk about that. Jesus tells him, first of all, do you agape me? Which is the strongest term. Saying, do right. you love me like that? You talk right. all of that? Do you love and Peter can't say that because he's hurt and he's ashamed. Mm -hmm. And so what Jesus does is minimize the love. Say, well, at least do your brother-in-law me. Do you can, right. can we at least be friends? He said, right. Lord, you know I love you. And, yeah. and so Peter, Jesus says, Do you agape me? But Peter's response is, I, I can't, I can't claim that no more. I've been I've been humiliated. Mm -hmm. And I think he gives a lower level mm -hmm. of the love. But the point is, Jesus, like I said bro, so well, Brother Johnson, Jesus brings the love down right? Mm -hmm. so he can meet it. Mm -hmm. But I think, that, I think, I think the last love was restoration, was confirmation, wasn't it? It was that well, he, right? had, it, he it, has it restored was, Peter. He, he let said, him know in so many words that my love is complete now. For mm -hmm. you, I mean, your love, my love, you know, you've been restored. I mean, it was, it was, right. it was, yeah. Yeah, he kind of. It was like a setup, but it was he meant something. And he was going somewhere, but then when he flipped it on the end, it meant that you've been restored. You Absolutely, know? I think you're right. He was saying largely and loudly, "You can't get up to the love you claim, but I'll bring right. it down to you." But mm -hmm. he, knew, he knew Peter loved him, but Peter was mm -hmm. humiliated, and I think that's the that's the point that uh, he's trying to make here. Hold on a second. All right, uh, next question, next place. Question is, let's see, more symptoms of the rubble. How do we avoid having the symptoms of the rubble? And he, the first one is through using scripture properly is my point. Is, can y'all see that screen share is paused? No. no y'all can still see it? Okay. All right, by assessing what's in our possession for godly stewardship, I think that's the other way we can avoid uh, having to sift through the rubble is make a true assessment of what's in our possession for godly stewardship. Jesus mm. tells Peter, take care of my lambs. They're not yours. They're mine. But I um, want you to take care of them. Okay? And, and has God placed in our custody something to be managed, brothers? Amen. Yeah, right now. Uh, <laughs> time, right now in this particular season of a uh, pandemic, He's giving us time, and we have to be good stewards with our time. Absolutely. And also, our talent as well. Though we may, in a, may be in a pandemic, we still are gifted because he's gifted us with for such a time as this. And we still have to be utilizing the gift that he gave us. So our time and our talent. Very good. Can we practically come up with anything different than those that he's put in our possession to, to keep steward over Brother Teacher? Yes. Uh, this kind of may sound a little different, but it's still, I'm along the same street that you're on. As we're leaving the campus, we were at an advantage because we could see each other, but I'm noticing there was a tendency of the, the people you know and the people you didn't know. So the people you know, of course, Brother Davis, uh, Brother Willis, uh, Brother Eugene, I'm going to say hello to, but I'm noticing, I want to go back, I'm kind of touching on that fishing and farming, but bringing it up to your stewardship question. Mm -hmm. The people that you don't know, it's kind of difficult to say, hey, you know, we we need your help. You know, it's just like, what is our starting point? So the reason I'm mentioning this is there's a uh, opportunity there in terms of uh, sort of the, we can't farm if we don't know what the person is and, and what they possess in terms of the stewardship. You, you can't cultivate anything if they're, if they're just faces that you see. So I, I, I suggest, I'm, I'm going back five minutes. 
but I'm going to suggest that in leadership, the people who are deacons, the people who are in visible positions, not necessarily you, but just maybe we could uh, encourage the brothers more that, that, hey, we need some help. It's not about, uh, it's not about making you do something. It's like this campus is, uh, is in need of help in terms of, when, you know, when you drive down there, perfect example, I was watching the, um, I was watching the erection of a church nearby. I won't say the name of it, but there's a large church being built right down the street from Lily Grove. And, but we, we got, we're at the advantage. We're already built. We're already there. We already know, as the brothers alluded to, there are fish here, you know, but all I'm getting at is we can't farm. We can't cultivate if we don't know the person. I know what brother Tate does generally. I don't know specifically what he does. I know what brother Gilmore does, but the people that we don't know, I think are in a higher number than the people that we do know, if that makes sense. Uh, in, in the text, again, going back to John passage, Jesus says, do you love me more than these? One could say, he's asking Peter, do you love me more than the rest of these men, right? And that fits, because that he said, hey, I'm, I'm not going to ever leave you. I'm different. Than, but he could be saying, do you love me more than these fish? Because he goes back fishing, and I've told you to stop the lead of fish alone. I've told you to go and become fishers of men. And then notice, at the at the fires, Brother Johnson brought us away. He already got fish. It's fish there when they get there. And if, as if to say, God said, I don't need any fish, but I, I need you to take care of these lambs. So I'm asking again, what has God put in our possession through to, for us to manage through stewardship? What are some things that he's put in our possession? Jim, Jimmy gave us some good attributes. I mean, our time, our talent, those are good. Can you think of anything more practical than that? Well, I think... <laughs> Your family, if you got your wife, if you got children, sure. if God has blessed you with somebody to disciple, all of, those, all of those things are something that God has put in your possession. I right. mean, when, you know, one of the one of the best things I, I, I like in the Bible is Jesus' prayer to God in John 17. Jesus said these words. He said, Father, you gave them to me, talking about the disciples. Correct, correct. And I'm going to give them right back to you. In other words, what he was saying is that I'm giving them back to you better than it was when you gave them. So Very good. Very Jesus, good. God put the disciples in Jesus' possession. And yeah. Jesus said, I gave them your word. That's what you said the first one, through scripture. Yeah. Jesus said, I gave them your word. I gave them an example, and I gave them everything that they would need to carry on their mission. So uh, if God has put a, a spouse in your possession, uh, scripture says we ought to wash our wives with the word. Amen. Some that, brother Ware, I don't want to hear another thing out of you. I don't want to hear another thing out of you for at least 10 minutes, okay? okay. <laughs> I'm teasing. That's, hey, can we take what Brother Ware just said perfectly and, and, and utilize that in another context other than in our home? <laughs> what has God given us possession of that we are to be good stewards of? Uh, I but this planet and everything in it, uh, we're responsible for leaving this planet to our children and grandchildren. And not only the planet, but all the animals, everything that God made, he put man in charge of it. We're responsible for leaving that. Um, cool. Anything so else? Generation. Yeah. Okay. Tim Washington. Yes. Uh, you just said it, uh, the, the, the uh, church building that we're at now, he gives us an awesome task and an awesome responsibility. We, we've we got the fish. Yeah. Because the kingdom men that's there now, we are the fish. Amen. You know, we got different size, different types of fish. And I think when I was, as I was listening to you earlier, when he was directing it to Peter, sometimes he direct, he direct these to leadership because of the awesome task that they have. Because in the end of that scripture, it said, feed my lamb, feed my sheep. Right. That's leadership. Is that if he's giving you the confidence, because I think when I looked at that scripture, I think he had to give Peter confidence in, in, in the task that he had to do. Because if you don't have the confidence to do it, you'll never have the ability, not so much the ability, you, you'll always find some reason not to do it. Right. Well, no, you're good, Johnson. Let's go further. This is a list of, believe it or not, the men who are at the Lily Grove Church right now. 2020, I call it, uh-oh. 
uh, according to membership, our membership in 2020 is 2,224 men. Mm -hmm. 2,224 men in membership, okay, at Lily Grove Church. That's a lot of men. In mm -hmm. many, in, in almost any context, that's a lot of men, wouldn't you say? Yeah. That's a lot of men. And <laughs> here, I just have it broken up into some compartments of the those who I can call out and say they are kingdom men. And this is deacons and brothers who who signed up or in some way or another connected with us at least once in some level or another. It's 93. But men under 19 years old, 229. But check this out. Under 39, from 20, from 19 to 39, there are 744 men somewhere there about. Mm. There are 900 and 25 who are over 40. That's a lot of men. And then I have these others. Our kingdom men voices, I kind of put them in yellow. And there are some other men who are outside the kingdom men academy, but they're active, regular, visual. And as I was going down the list, these are men I could identify. I knew who they were, but I know they don't. They're not a, they're not a part of, for example, the kingdom men's ministry, in, in other words, in terms of what we try to do uh, there clergy, and then seniors. There's 72 men who are over 75 years old in our church, uh, some sick, some. It's 30 men who I don't know whether they're men or, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know what their ages are because uh, the record doesn't have that, and then it's a couple of them that are gone. But my point is there are 2,224 men somewhere thereabout of brethren who I believe God has put in our possession. He's put in our vicinity to do ministry with. So that's a, that's a, that's a resource. That's a, what are look for? Something that God has given us to have stewardship over. Are y'all with me? Uh, that he's yeah. given us to have stewardship over. Now, again, 2,000 people, that's a lot. But, but even if you got a good 10% of those, that's 200. And 20 is only what, uh, 1% or <laughs> something like that. Well, I'm saying, these are things God has put in our possession for us to do ministry with. And if that's, a, if that's e equaling the number of fish that are caught that need to make it to shore, then that's, that's, that's a pretty staggering number that we need to be dealing with. Okay, let's go further. And I, I, yes, go ahead. Um, Rev. Washington, I want to just ask, um, is that number, say for instance, the, the largest number on there, uh, target 40, 40 and over, that's 925. What are you saying, that they are not actively in ministry or they're not producing or they're not, what does that number represent? Good question. It means there are a group of men over 40 who might be in Sunday school, might not be, but I couldn't pull them out visually. Oh, but, okay. but it's too many, I, I, I mean, it just take too much time to do it. But th there's a great number of men who are over 40 years old who technically, are not busy doing anything overly notable. That's all I'm saying. But that's not to say that they're not in Sunday school. So I apologize for that. But but that's where that yellow category came in. I was going down those. Those were men who were present that I could visually call their names. I knew exactly who they were, but I couldn't put them in kingdom men. But I mean, they may be in Sunday school, but I couldn't put them everywhere. You know. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, let's go further. I went through that same list and I tried to get the more popular ages, the ages where we have a lot of men and you're still seeing that orange -ish section is still the larger where it's the 37 year olds and under. That's your young adult area, you know, all the way down to um, some of the minors, which are 18, 19. But look at that 18 year old boys, 33, 17 year old boys, 36, 16 year old boys. 32 of them. That's 100 young boys, if the numbers, if the data in the system is right, that are not even 19 years old yet. Okay. And then on the other side, you'll see um, the 65, 62, kind of like your heavy hitter area of age where you, these men ought to be busy doing something in the church. Okay. Now, further, 
if Jesus initiated initially told Peter to go fishing, Peter left is later reassigned to begin shepherding and farming. My question again, gentlemen, is how can we begin to form within this kingdom in in 2021? I'm talking about Lily Grove now. How do we begin to form within the kingdom of men, if you will, in, ch in church in 2021? Now, 2,000 men around here. How do we begin? That was a good idea. Any others? Uh, brother Teacher? Yes. Uh, I just say intentional engagement. Uh, walking past and not saying nothing isn't going to change anything. And I, I've been in error. I've assumed before that silent meant disengagement. That's uh -huh. what that means. So mm -hmm. I, these brothers are still with it, but a tap on the shoulder won't hurt. And, and in this era of uh, pandemic, I'm really noticing a concentrated effort should be made by uh, people like myself. We can't put this off on the deacons. Mm -hmm. At some point, we don't. We can't have barbecues every year. At some point, it has to be. These are people you're going to see. What fifty-two Sundays? Right. Uh, you, you have to say something to somebody. Okay. So, are, are you fishing or are you farming? That's. Yeah. Ugh, now you're splitting here. <laughs> well, if I can interject while you think about it. Yeah. I would say you're farming because they're already there at the church. Yeah, good, and good. So if they wasn't at the church, then we'd be fishing for them. But I would like to piggyback on what he said about intentional engagement. Mm -hmm. uh, I, was, I was at a wedding on um, Saturday, and, and there was a new brother. Uh, I know he's new because, uh, you know, his wife, they're newly wed, and I didn't see him before they got married. So, and, and I, and I uh, you know, now that I'm, uh, uh, you know, in, for 12 years now I've been in leadership, but now I'm actually chairman now. So a lot of people would will, will, will know, you know, your face or, or know you before you would know them. Mm -hmm. So Willis and, and Brother Johnson can definitely attest to that, that they, they, they know your name because of the title you hold. So I make it my point that I don't prove Brother Johnson right when, when, when he say that, we're not engaging people and letting new people come about and be part of uh, this little girl family, uh, and, and take part in what's going on. So I, I actually introduced him. Well, he already knew I was. That was the craziest thing. He already knew who I was. I didn't really know him, but I invited him. I asked him about was he a member of the church. I know he just got there, and he said he, he is. He 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 joined over the pandemic. I said okay, fine. In April, so I offered him Sunday school. And 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 uh, he did chime in uh, through the Zoom on Sunday school, but what I'm saying is, I won't I won't let an opportunity go by no more. I'm, I'm, uh, there's no more excuses about not speaking to people or not actually getting to know their name and not engaging them and not encouraging them to come on and be a part of what we already have going on. We 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 got some good stuff going on in Little Grove, and and and. And we just need to we think we need to cultivate. We need to feed the ones that are there, because they're they're willing. And you know, uh, uh, you know, people like Johnson, he can talk to anybody, and 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 he'll have them, uh, you know, riled up, ready to come on out. And then once they come on out, it's people like myself, people like Othello, people like uh, you know Tate, Lucas. It is up to us to actually keep them there and and, and engage them more and and make them feel part of. The, 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 the sheepfold, make them feel part, part of the family. So I, I think intentional engagement is one way we can definitely, uh, you know, uh, uh, stir up the, the pot of the, of, the, of the men we have uh, on campus. Yeah. One thing I, I think, think, I think also, uh, sorry, Eugene, uh, or Luke, I think also that I, I, when we look at the numbers, uh, for me, the numbers for the younger brothers uh, what stands out to me is that we have to meet them where they are. Uh, uh, so when that number comes, uh, Reverend Washington said, I think there's about 100 based on the younger people. We have to really just meet them where they are. You, you have to engage them. You cannot engage them if we don't meet them where they are. And when I say meet them where they are, they may not dress like we dress, look like we look, but we got to meet them where they are to, to bring them in. We already have them. So if the brother is willing to come now, Right, he's coming there, and I understand he doesn't look like us, dress like us, and this and that, because we're older people. 
Yeah. But it's a whole bunch of younger people that are trying their best to find somewhere to, to, to lounge or to lay and to learn, but we don't engage them because, once again, they don't look like us. And when I say that, brothers, I mean because I've experienced uh, younger brothers that come to the church that, that have tattoos, pants hanging down, and all those things. And because of us, we've already caught them because nine times 10, he's already come. But we run them off, or we, the net is open from us because we don't allow them uh, or we don't meet them where they are. Listen, it's going to come a time that they will come to, to the church and be more if we allow them to be who they are. Listen, I get it. It may not look good at that moment, but there's a teaching moment right there. Huh? He hasn't always been like that. And my biggest issue would be like, no matter where it comes, at least he's coming. That's just me. And so if he's willing enough to come, I have to allow myself to say, he's here. Let me work with him and meet him and say, you know what, brother? I see your pants are down today, but hey, man, hey, you don't mind pulling them up a little bit? And once again, that's a learning experience. And then he'll start to learn mm -hmm. those things. And then we'll become uh, uh, more people because the younger people are the ones that's running. That, that, that hundred that he talked about, I can tell you 50 of them already. I can tell you they're running because we don't allow them and we don't meet them where they are. We always talk about, well, just meet them where they are. But are we truly meeting them where they are? Hmm. Right. So it sounds like you're saying there's still some fishing even in the midst of farming. Yeah. Um, Reverend Washington, I know you told me don't be talking too much, but <laughs> I just wanted to ask, ask, uh, ask you this. One of the things I found out is that when new members come, new people come to the Kingdom Men Academy, we acknowledge them, but I think they 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 might leave not feeling loved, they might not feel engaged, they might not feel like being a part. And I think one of the things that we could possibly do is to get their phone number and do a follow-up call with them, you know, after they come because a lot of them come, but they don't return. And I wonder why. Could it be because they don't feel like they've been accepted or they haven't been loved or they might have just been looked over? I think if if we can have somebody call them, mm -hmm. do a follow-up with them, welcome them, and find out if they, need, if, they need, if they need a book or something like that, I think that might make them feel more um, uh, uh, accepted, so Very to speak. Good. Brother Webb, Luca, did you want to add something? And Brother Webb, great comment. I want to come back to that. Luca? Yeah, I think we have to, like, get out of the comfort zone of just passing by them. And, and, and you know, when church is over, just running out. But actively maybe look for somebody to say something to that we haven't spoken to before. Um, make it a point each Sunday to do that. And that's on myself, too. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a lot of times in my comfort zone, I just pass and speak. Sometimes don't even speak, and and we we should treat them as assets to the body of Christ. Very good. So that's one way we can answer this question. How can we begin to form within this this kingdom in 2021? Is be deliberate in invitation. Be deliberate in 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 uh, like Brother Ware was just saying. I lost my oh, uh, but by by doing the hard stuff first because. I mean, even you're going to have an amusement park where there's a lot of fun and all of those things. It's a lot of work going into setting up roller coasters and, and all those kind of things, booths and all those things. And I think some of it is, is what Brother Ware said. It's the nuts and bolts of what we do. It's like going through a list like this and, and, and almost formulating a committee of folk who will try to identify where these people are. Some don't want to be bothered. Fine. But out of 2,000 men, some do. Some want us to take interest in, in what, what, why they're here and those kind of things. And what Eugene Smith said, that was somewhat evangelistic. It was letting that young man know, hey, I don't know you. How are you, how are you doing? What, what, is, what, is it, what is it that you're engaged in in your church? And that needs to be a part of what we do. So one way we begin is by trying to go where they are, like Brother Gilmore said, trying to go where they are. So it's making room, moving over, Irvin Johnson. Like my Brother Johnson would say, we got to make room for people. And then that's just but Brother West said, we need to do some invitations as well, okay? Let's go a little bit further. Any other comments? The Reverend okay. Watson, man, say something? John. Um, I noticed in August we have our Men's Day program, and we get all the brothers together in August, and we have a program on Saturday where we have conference and teaching and everything. We get a lot of men that comes together in August. And it seemed like after August, after we get together with the singing and praising, 
September, everybody go off to their different worlds and we don't communicate with each other anymore. And we need, I feel we need to do that monthly and daily really, but um, monthly if we can, instead of just one month out of a year. Right, very good. And I want to be clear, this is not about Monday night. It's about right. engaging me in period to just be right. active enough to where I know him, even though he doesn't do anything with us on Monday night, it's fine. But this is not just a passerby of the Lily Grove Church. This guy is active. He does what he can do, that kind of thing, okay? Mm -hmm. Great, great, great. Othello, were you going to say something? I was just going to say the same thing, but instead of Men's Day, I was going to say uh, the Sunday school was like house money. I mean, you, you, you have a teachers there that, are, for the most part, are engaged here. So not putting it on the Sunday school teacher, but uh, somebody could – mentioned it in the Sunday school classes that, hey, it's not about, like you see, a coming Monday, that, but there is a higher level in this thing. You know, it's just an hour on, um, it's just an hour on Sundays, but it's even another hour, you know, if you would like to participate. Very good. Bro Brother Hall is on this line. I, I saw Brother brother Myron Hall. Are you there, Brother Hall? Yes, uh, yes, I am. Brother Hall, question. Uh, one of what I've noticed in your email address is tuna. Do you fish? <laughs> no, no, that was just a nickname I, I picked up uh, <laughs> early age. <laughs> well, that's gonna ruin my illustration. Okay. <laughs> well, anybody here fish? I'm sure somebody here fish. <laughs> well, question Can you catch all fish the same way? No, no, sir. No, I've never been fishing in my life, but I know that you cannot catch all fish the same way, you got to find different ways. And so further, going back to our list, I went through this thing and kind of created kind of an idea, I guess, for lack of a better word. Begin at the top, you'll see the Kingdom Men's Academy. Okay, fine. These men I know, we put our hands on, they, they, they have some connection through Sunday school or something. Fantastic. But if you guys know anything about football, high school football, I've heard this said, I think Stephen Scott's here and other you guys who keep up with high school football, there are teams like Katie. They don't just get good one year. They keep being good, and I wonder why. Why do they keep being good? Good coaching. Good coaching? Recruiting. Good fishing. They, they, somebody said fishing? They, Recruiting. They, they're continuing to fish. Yeah. Good, good farm system. It's farming. I think, that's, I think that's the answer I'm looking for. I don't know if that's 100% true, but it's farming. You, yeah. you you can't play varsity if you're in the third third grade, but you can be a part of their farm. You know what I mean? It's, it's if you're in middle school, they're watching you, but it ain't your turn yet. Mm. And, and what I have here is kind of the idea of you have the the zoo. The zoo is basically these kids who are 18, 17, 16, as wild as that sounds, they're in a controlled place though. But they're high priority for us, just not today. They need to be important to us to make sure that they're sticking around so that they can go from the zoo to the farm. The farm is your young adults. These are the people who are finding themselves. They're trying to get their careers together, but they're welcome to the kingdom academy, but they have different interests. But you move them from the zoo to the farm to the camp. The camp is people who ought to already be active and busy in church business. They have families. Yes, they got kids. Yes, they got jobs, but they need to be turned in the direction of doing ministry. This is the people who are, oh, 40 years old and above. And those ought to be our target people to make sure young men or men at this stage are starting to buy into the kingdom, even though that's late. But you follow what I'm saying? It starts with kids in the zoo, but we got to keep them there. You got to cage them, block them in. Then you go to the farm, which is a closed space, but there's intimacy on the farm. And then the camp is people who have the freedom to come and go, but they mean something. I need to mean something to this, this kingdom, if you will, to this gathering. You see what I mean? And so in my mind, I'm thinking, I don't know how to do it, but these are different fish. You can't catch them all the same way. The people in the camp have different interests than people in the farm. The people in the farm have different interests than the people in the zoo, but it is up to us as a group of leaders of men who are pointing people in those directions for the purpose of ministry to make sure that this is not their time, but they're ready when they take, when they get to, to high school, they're ready to play because they've been in the system. They've been formed in a sense. Uh, 
Does that make any sense? Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, talk to me. What do you see in what I'm offering or what I'm saying in some way or another? And maybe it's just a question of how do we begin to catch those fish that fit these different levels? Because we can't catch them all the same way. Like uh, you, uh, Brother Gilmore said, some of them, they, they, they got tattoos, they got this, that, and that. They're in a different category. But if we don't put any emphasis on the zoo, they'll never make it to the farm. Mm. And if we don't put any emphasis on the farm, they'll never make it into the camp. Pastor Washington, if I can, if I can uh, pick it back off what Brother Gilmore said, what you're saying, yes, sir, and I'm gonna try to make this make sense. Um, all of us on here are part of the form of the zoo, but we all have different interests and things that we're involved with outside of Lily Grove. You know, for example, Brother Luke and I, we we came from the same, the same Sunday school class, but then we found out we both ride motorcycles. Okay, and so that's another bond right there. And there's a couple of other brothers at the church who we get together from time to time and we ride together. Uh, some of y'all might frown on this, but it's a couple of brothers. We smoke cigars. <laughs> but but there are some like Brother Othello and I. But my point is, we all have our different likes. And if we can get these brothers and know what they like, know what they're interested in, and that might be a bond, and then we can get that, take that bond, and pull these brothers into the Kingdom Men Association. Because, like, brother, again, we got brothers who sag and tat. I got tattoos. You uh -huh. might not know it because I got a suit on every Sunday, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I can relate to some of these guys on a different degree, and I think we need to take what we have here and think outside the box. Some of us go to war on Sunday mornings because you like the Texans or, or you like the, the, the Browns or the Cowboys or whoever, but that's another bond because it's sports. So we could take the things that we're interested in, build a common bond with some of these brothers outside of here that's a part of the church, and then we can bring these, possibly bring these brothers in because they'll start seeing like-minded brothers in where we are today. Well, you know, I, I, Reverend Washington, if I, could just, if I could just get in right here. Darren, what Darren said is so so true and so so right, but I I want to I want to attach also with, to what Brother Ware was saying earlier about you know you have brothers come in then you don't see them no more or whatever. I don't want us to get discouraged about that part because what we're doing here on Monday night and the way we do it, that's an acquired taste. I mean, it it, it, it it's an acquired taste. We know it's good for us because we've been walking with it for a little while now. But it's an acquired taste. But I think, like what Darren was saying, you know, there are different uh, things uh, to, to to meet brothers where they are. Like Brent was saying, to pull together, and you you can you probably can have another group of another fifty people, uh, fifty brothers who 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 have the same interests, and 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 expound on about and on the Bible that way in that area, but it still be under the Kingdom Men umbrella, under Lily Grove. But it's just different likes and different interests, and and we don't need to wait on this to get this going because, you know, I used to I used to pride myself on being one of the youngest brothers in Little Grove when yeah. when I would go to Brotherhood <laughs> and everything. Brothers, next January, if the Lord let me live, I'll be fifty two. What time is moving on? You I thought know, you so, were thirty nine. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you know, I, you know, I I think I'm thirty nine <laughs> when I go on the basketball court. And then one time up and down the. The court, I, I know I'm 52, but what I'm saying is, Darren is so right. Hey, th th there's other things out there that I think can, we, can, we, we can attract brothers with and still be in a spiritual realm. You know, a lot of brothers like cars. A lot of brothers like motorcycles. Yeah, uh, even the pastor love a good cigar. But, and, but then their, I can't have said, uh, their compartment, the compartments where we can get together and still discuss uh, 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 the Bible and discuss brotherhood stuff, but I, I just think the way we do it here, it's it's kind of old school. I'm not I'm not saying it's outdated, but it's just an acquired taste. So I think, you know, uh, if, if somebody would see it for them, that, that's why when I spoke to the brother, I, I can't believe I'm saying this because that's what I was thinking about. When I spoke to the brother Saturday, I specifically mentioned Sunday school rather than Kingdom Men Academy. Because right. I, I can just tell a brother about 24 years old, he coming here and look, look at all these faces, look at Brother Johnson with, with that with that uh, distinguished goatee. He'd be like, man, what I'm doing here? 
you know. So so I I, th I think the, the the Sunday school younger brothers, you know, and and maybe maybe it's time we need to pull the the, the coattail of uh, Reverend uh, Rose, Heritage Rose, and see what 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 that what what that little farm system is doing over there, and and trying to make sure that they 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 in line and getting in this canal at some point, and and to kind of go from there. Well, let me jump in. I, I think that's exactly what I'm saying. I think what Darren said, but Brother Smith, I, I, I'm doing what I do well. But this ain't all that this is about. You cannot catch all the fish the same way. And I'm not ignorant enough to even think that. Not to say you all are saying that. I'm not ignorant enough to think that. That's why, that's why we're, I'm stimulating conversation and talk so that we can diversify in whatever fashion we might be able to reasonably going into a new year. Because at the end of the day, this might be my speed. This is about it for me. <laughs> this might be my speed. But I know it's different fish in this aquarium or in this tank over here where there are people who, who I mean, the bottom line is you got you to gotta win. The, we got to get them in. And we got to do it because the season's right. We've got plenty of fruit, plenty, plenty, plenty uh, uh, in our possession. And we've got to find ways to make them matter if you will, in the kingdom. So I, 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 that's all I'm saying. I'm not at all opposed to what you gentlemen are saying, and I'm not offended. I realize that you got to think big. You got to think motorcycles. You got to think those things because you got to catch the fish. If we don't do that, we end up with another of the same thing. It's called Sunday school. But this is supposed to stimulate some, some other things that's supposed to help us, okay? Let me go a little Reverend, bit further and listen up. Go Reverend, right here. Go ahead. Reverend Washington, is it possible uh, we can get a Kingdom Man directory with phone numbers and maybe email address and with names and stuff so we can contact each other uh, for um, uh, strengthening? Uh, you know, if, uh, if I need to call a brother, you know, if I'm having problems or something, you know, you can call them and, you know, we can pray together and talk together or whatever. Well, I would give you anything you need if that's what we want to do. But one of the ways we facilitate fellowship is through church school, where everybody belongs in a family. Right. Those kind of things as well. But, but, but Don, I trust you. You've been a member around here a long time. And if you wanted that, I can do that. Or we can work on building that for the whole group. I don't have – that's easy. That's a click of a button. So it's not hard right. at all. That could be done. Okay. Yeah. But, but I don't want this to be the hub. Sunday school needs to be the hub because that's where they get a regular diet of church Bible study and those kind of things. And this isn't exactly trying to displace that. And, and I'm done. You follow what I'm saying? But it's just this, this, this can serve that secondary purpose. But the primary is Sunday school. We want to get them. I want to get the, every man in, in church school. That right. That's connected to a family. Okay. Did I? Oh, oh, yes, old fellow. Real quick, just just another thing, just to encourage everyone that sometimes, as Gene said, everybody don't like the same thing, and and it has to have, be some thick skin about people you approach. For the one that you don't meet, there'll be three that you will. I mean, I'm finding now, like walking out of the sanctuary, the, the the one person on this group that's on this page now, he'll laugh when I say this. I never thought I would speak to Stephen Scott in a million years. I mean, I I, I would go the other way when I saw him, but it turns <laughs> out, you know, we have certain things in common. I figured, hey man, anybody that wear suits like that, he would never speak to me. But it turns out we like U of H stuff. It turns out we, you know, we just have more in common than I thought, but I was very intimidated initially, not because of me, something I thought was a shortcoming, but it's just some people you figure you wouldn't have nothing in common with. You know? Well, we're glad you got over that. And I think Steve is one of the most down earth person you'll ever meet. So <laughs> thank the Lord for that. <laughs> let, let me push a little bit further. I'm sorry, we, but I'm, that's what this is about is having a discussion. So I appreciate that, gentlemen. All right. How do we avoid having to sift through the rubble as men's ministry during these vital times with such favorable opportunity for men's ministry? Well, we have a mission, and that's our mission, and I don't want to ever veer away from that as kingdom men. This is our mission. Kingdom men assemble to encourage Christian men to become spiritually and physically fit, mm. morally conscious, biblically sound, and readied, ready for Christian service through regular fellowship with other Christian brothers. That's all Monday night is about. It's about encouraging, helping us to become, and notice that physically and spiritually fit, physically and spiritually fit. Now we have not added the physical component. We went walking one time, but that's all right. We can do better than that next year. Uh, being morally conscious though. So even though in our humanities, we get together, we share things intimately, 
but the the overall compass of a kingdom man ought to be regulated to do what God wants or what pleases God. Okay? Because everybody at 18 ain't where a 48-year-old is. But at 48, you ought not be where an 18-year-old is either. Okay? So this is about us growing morally. And, and I'm not... And I don't, I'm not ashamed to say that because I'm finna clean. I ain't trying to make us a whole. No, we need to live better. We need to all want to live better. And I'm not be ashamed of that because at some point you leave being 20 years old. Right. At some point you leave being 30. It's time to pass those, some of those things off. Okay. And then he says being, and I offer of being biblically sound. Even though we have not absolutely harped on scripture, it's what we do. And we don't want to be inaccurate with it. We don't want to be careless with the reading and the understanding of Scripture. We need to be biblically sound, kingdom men. And then we need to be ready for Christian service. Irvin Johnson has challenged us on that. And I still say, hey, we got room for services. We got room for volunteers. We got room to bring the projects. We can get them done. But we ought to be ready for any Christian service, whether it's a, a campaign from our pastor or whether it's a campaign through through the men's ministry or the, the ladies or a food pantry, the evangelism, it, it don't matter. You know, I, I heard a guy say this and it made a lot of sense. He says, when he goes shopping, it doesn't matter what car the, 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 the person asked for. He said that they just, you know, cause he got his stuff together. It doesn't matter whether it's visa, discover or whatever it is. He doesn't have to, like in the old days, I guess when we didn't have much revenue, we were scared to put the cards out because we didn't know which one we had paid. We paid that one, but we didn't pay this one. We paid this one, but didn't pay that one. Well, when your stuff is right, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mm. matter. You can handle it. And as Christian men, when we're well fit spiritually and physically, it doesn't matter. We can do it all. We can, we can lead a class. We can follow leadership. We can honor our pastor. We can witness in scripture. We can sing in a choir. We can rally for men's day. We can support boys and we can do it all but everybody ain't called to do exactly the same thing, okay? And then through regular fellowship with other Christian brothers. Eugene and I've talked about it a couple of times, and I don't know if we said it. And my intention is not necessarily to drag you here every Monday night, but I like being here. I'm going to be here. But, but you ought to drop in. There ought to be men. We can't get 2,000 men on the call, but you ought to have men dropping in because they care about what's going on on Monday night. They ought to care about the fellowship. And that's how we get stronger is by fellowshipping with other Christian brothers. So that's another way that we're going to keep ourselves from being uh, uh, sifting through the rubble this time next year is by embracing and activating and making practical this mission to encourage Christian men to become spiritually and physically fit, morally conscious, biblically sound, ready for Christian service through regular fellowship with other Christian believers, other Christian brothers. If they're not going to, if they don't get anything from us, they won't want to hang around us. But we need to make sure we have something to share. Okay. So, Brother Watson, you said that encouragement, transformation, yeah. being fit, being conscious, being sound minded, mm -hmm. being ready for service all come through fellowship with other Christian brothers. Amen. Is that what you're saying? I'm offering that as a real solution. <laughs> with other Christian brothers. <laughs> well, I thank you, brother. I thank you. That that means a whole, all of that comes through just through our regular fellowship. Yeah, just fellowshipping with one another. Exactly. That's and very good. Finally, how do we avoid having to sift through the rubble as a men's ministry during these vital times with such favorable opportunities for, for men's ministry is by embracing our oath as kingdom men standing to acknowledge positions in Christ places in our home, potential for service in our church, and purpose in the world. I end with that because it means a lot to me, and hopefully it means more to you the more you read it and embrace it. We began this year with our pens. Uh, one of our great brothers designed a great pen, and we bought it, and we got them. And guess what? I've only been able to give 25 pens. That's sad. 25 pens. Now, this isn't just about memorizing an oath, but it's about uh, us being identified together as men, as kingdom men, and hopefully if we can ever get back together, we can officially start wearing our pen. But I want you to find me. Come get your pen. Come and get your pen. Come and deserve and earn, earn these pens because I want you to embrace this to the point where it's not just some words that I really want to live up to this oath. And that's, that's how we're going to 
keep ourselves from being a being a, 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 a sifting through the rubble rather. I was finna say be a reproach. We're not a reproach now, but we can always do better. We don't want to sift through the rubble another year. We wanna we wanna fix some of these things. We wanna make our place a better place for these young boys and stuff. And one way we do that is by going on purpose to meet these young men, these younger men or these men who are our age who ain't doing anything to get them engaged and involved in our church. I even thought about this. We can sift these kind of things and work them in and we'll talk about them in the coming year. We will resume our study of uh, No More Excuses, by the way. But if you had a man, a, a father, son, I don't know, uh, uh, day out, I don't know, then next year you do father and daughter, next time, or whatever. But the point is, we're trying to build relationships. We're trying to build strong, strong men with strong constitutions who are serious about the gospel. There are, there are people in Washington who lie every other word and they lead people. They're, they're figureheads and leadership. We want to be better than that. I got a call. I'll, clo I'll start closing up with these words. I, I got a call. No, I got an email yesterday morning. And the email blessed me so much. And the first thing, I was just calling John Doe. When I got John Doe's email yesterday morning, it blessed me. And the first thing crossed my mind is they don't make a better man than John Doe. I mean, this, 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 this brothers, they just don't make them any better than that. And I thought about that for our Kingdom Men's Academy, that when men, women, whoever come around this campus and get to know Kingdom Men, they'll say they don't make better men than those Kingdom Men over there at Lily Grove. That, that's, that's really what my goal is. My inner goal is to make us a, a, at least provide a vessel of vehicle that enables us to be the best, the best we can be or to the point where they just don't make them any better than us, uh, the, the, the men here at Lily Grove Church. And that's, that's, that's really what I want. And that, that can take all kinds of shapes, forms, and fashion in the coming year. But I would hope that we have something we can be proud of. And it's working. It, it's effective. It's effective. So uh, uh, comments, anybody else? What can we do? And we're going to close it out. And, and uh, I don't want to keep you all night if we ain't got to. But it's getting close anyway. What say you? What say you? But, but Brother, Brother Washington, I know you told me don't say too much again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but one thing. One thing I learned about from Jesus and how he uh, converted people, transformed people, is that he made, he made friends before he made converts. Mm -hmm. he, 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 he befriended people. And that's one of the mistakes I made early on. I tried to convert people before I even made friends with them. And that's, I think, what, what uh, O'Neill was saying. You engage with people and you find out, you make friends with them. If, and one of the things you look for when you're talking to people is you find out what their needs are. Mm -hmm. If you can meet their need, man, you got a friend indeed. And that's, I think that's one of the ways that we can grab people and hold on to them. Make friends before you make converts. Amen. Find out what their needs are. Meet a need. And you got a friend indeed. That's Jesus' method. That's Jesus' method. And I think it's a method that we can, we can practice too. Right. That, there's, there's a little farming in our, there's a little fishing that needs to go in our farming. But brother, where's right? We, we, are, we ought to at least be friends before we ask them for anything. I ask them to come join me in Bible study. It's to um, try to befriend them. I like that. Any other thoughts, brothers? For the teacher? Yeah. I grew up with a young, with a man named uh, Tommy Holman. Thomas Holman was his name. He used to sing in our men's choir and his song was called Prayer is the Key to the Kingdom. But the line I want to leave with for the year, because this year has just helped me so much to understand how we on this line really do uh, make a difference. If every man would still pray on Monday nights for opportunities, if every man on this line would pray for and believe that there are there is farming opportunities in 2021, not 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 saying it's 6:30, but just in, or not just on Monday, mm -hmm. but uh, it's just it's something about the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous that avail it much. And I really believe that, uh, yes, we all been praying for protection from COVID. Yes, we've been praying for, you know, still keep these little jobs we own. But I, I think if we pray for the young men around our community, we pray that uh, Tate would be more friendly in 2021. I think everything would be okay. <laughs> hey, I would just like to add one thing. I know we're talking about fishing and uh, Pastor Washington, you had talked about um, just making sure like the Sunday school and, and men attending Sunday school. Uh, um, in uh, class number six, um, even though now I, I haven't 
attended in a while because Eugene and James Brown hold a stick to my head every Sunday about the streaming, but nevertheless. Uh, you know, if, if, we, if someone, if I missed, if I missed a Sunday, that that next Saturday, either Brother Hilliard or Brother Ware would call. Mm. They, 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 if you missed two, now they, 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 would, they would call and continue to call, but at least that next Saturday, will, someone will call you, if, if not a brother in, in the class or the secretary, he will call. But if you miss two, then the teacher will call and say, hey, are you all right? You know, it, it, is everything, you know, good with you? How you been? Mm -hmm. We miss you. You know, and, and that meant a lot. It meant a lot to make sure that I was accountable. And so I, I would just say, you know, um, I, I think that's, that is one good way to really fish and, and, and make brothers feel like, hey, you know, like you were saying, hey, that they all want it, that, that, hey, you know, the church is thinking about me. And yeah. I know that it helped me starting out. So Very I'll just good. Very good. God bless you, my brother. Very good. Real Austin. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just like to add up what you were saying, just through a story from my own personal house. I had a 55 gallon aquarium at one time. And in that aquarium, I had some puffer fish. I had some uh, uh, Jack Dempsey's. I had some catfish. But I, I kept noticing that my, my tank kept getting polluted. <laughs> it wasn't until I got that old ugly dogfish. <laughs> and I put him into the tank. Because we couldn't see the beauty of the tank until the dogfish started cleaning the bottom up. And it made the Jack Dempsey look better. It made the Oscars look better. It made the catfish look better. And, and when people looked at my aquarium, they were just always magnifying how beautiful it looked. But if it wouldn't have been for the dogfish, oh. and the only way, reason why I had to get the dogfish because I had to have something to balance out the rest of them. Cool. I, all I'm trying to say, all of us has got something that we can bring to the kingdom. No matter how small your gift is, you may magnify the, the, the whole 55 gallon tank got magnified because of the dogfish. We, but he didn't get much credit because all he was doing at the bottom was cleaning up. Mm -hmm. And I think if we all get together and, and when people come to Little Grove, what they see is a beautiful aquarium. We can't worry about who's doing the most or who's doing the less. If you do the best, God's going to honor that. Mm. Amen. That's what I just kind of want to leave that with. Now that's that's just a preacher for you. He had to work in that story, and, and he <laughs> <made it better. laughs> that, that still sounded good, though, Rip Johnson. I appreciate that. I don't know how dogfish fit into this, but that's good. I know we got some dogfish. <laughs> um, thank you, Rip Johnson. I appreciate that. Well, gentlemen, I want to thank you for twenty twenty. Uh, Rip Washington, I, I got yes. one last comment. If, if we can, can get in right before you have the last word. But, uh, brothers, uh, I got on a little late, and, uh, you know, I know you had already got started. But when I saw Reverend Washington today, earlier today, when I stopped by the church, and he had on his overalls, I was like, wow, you really got all old overnight. <laughs> you know, but then as he, as he brought up the lesson today, he was talking about farming, so I'm guessing that was a correlation. But, um, but I like to say to Reverend Washington, and I want all you brothers to hear uh, Happy birthday to Reverend Washington. You've been uh, definitely a, a, a catalyst for this uh, men's ministry. You've been pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. Today is your birthday. We definitely want to tell you happy birthday. Uh, yeah. You know, if, if things were different, wasn't in the pandemic, we'll take you out tonight. But since we got to just be home, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll pick it up uh, as soon as we can. We'll take you out somewhere. But uh, happy birthday. Eugene, thank you, man. I, I am. I'm speechless because I didn't think about this. this. Yeah, I did this on purpose. Yeah, I knew this was coming. This made all the sense in the world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, thank you, gentlemen, so much. Love y'all. Uh, again, we're going to pick up in January. Uh, obviously, we're going to go into our no more excuses. But if we need to shake up our format in some way or another, I, I welcome that. We just only have so much time. But uh, again, thank you so much for making this year great. I'm going to ask us to allow, uh, uh, we're going to close it out but I want to do a little something special. I'm going to ask Brother Leon Wynn. Wynn Brother Wynn, you lead us in the word of prayer, and I want Brother Scott to close us out in the word of prayer. I'm going to ask him to do that. 
And then I'm going to ask uh, Brother Irvin Johnson, uh, who is one of our kingdom men, to close us out in the oath. But thank you guys so much for making my life mean something to so many people. Brian, I see Brian's there. Brian, again, thank you again for being a great brother and a great supporter. Uh, just thank you for everything you've done. And again, it's been a great year, and we cannot wait to see what God's going to do next year. So let's take a break in December, and we'll we'll get get up and get started again in January. Thank you so much, brother. Uh, if there's nothing else, any special prayers? Again, we're going to remember Brother Spencer Turner in our prayers as well. Uh, again, he's he's doing better, but uh, he's had a major had a, had a procedure done, and he's still healing. So. Just remember in prayer. Brother Wynn, however the Lord leads you, and then Brother Scott, you close us out. When we're done, then we'll be in Brother Irvin Johnson's hand for our kingdom man's oath, okay? Brother Wynn. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Thank you, uh, Reverend Washington, and happy birthday. Thank to you, sir. Thank you so uh, much. To all of you brothers uh, on the line tonight, uh, I might add that this meeting is very inspirational. Uh, this is the first time that I had an opportunity to say anything. I'm generally not a big talker, but uh, I know a couple of people on the line, and I thank you for including me. Uh, now, if you will bow with me, dear God, our Father, we come this evening as humble as we know how, just to say thank you. Thank you for watching over us while we slept last night and waking us to a day that we'd never seen before. And you've been gracious and kind enough to walk with us throughout the day. And we thank you for health and strength. We thank you for the presence of mind to know that you are still God and besides you there is none other. We come before you this afternoon realizing that we have all sinned and fallen short of your glory. We ask that you would continue to keep us in your care. Separate us from our sinful ways, thoughts, and actions yes. as far as the east is the west. Thank you for your word and the studying of your word. We only ask that you would give us the ability to glean from your word, that that would make us better, that we might be able to influence someone who don't know you in the pardon of their sin, who want to be a part of your army. Yeah. I thank you for this meeting tonight. We thank you for uh, uh, Thanksgiving season that has been bountiful and blessed. Yeah. And we ask that you would keep us until we meet again. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I look to the Lord again, Father. We we come again, Father. To, uh, thank you, first of all, Father, for your many blessings. Father, it's been a a, a different kind of year, mm -hmm. uh, a challenging year, gracious Master. But uh, you've yet seen fit to allow us, Father, to to stay connected in in some way. Father, to, um, to encourage one another to continue to love each other, uh, continue to, to grow uh, collectively, Father, from the study of your word. So, Father, we thank you. That, we thank you for that. Father, we thank you, Father, that um, uh, we've not lost hope, Father, yeah. that we can, we can still trust you. We can still believe in you, Father, because your word is complete. Father, that we thank you, Father, because you're all sovereign, you're all knowing, Father. You have, you have all power, Father. We, we thank you for that. Father, we thank you, Father, because um, you yet love us. Father, we realize, my Father, that uh, there's so much that's still left for us to do, Father. We, we know, Father, that there's still, Father, farming to do. Uh, Father, we realize, Father, there's still fishing to do. But you thank, we thank you, Father, that you've yet allowed us to stay here to carry out your mission. So, Father, we, Father, we don't always see, Father, the, the increase, but, Father, we're going to continue to uh, plant. Yeah. Father, we're going to continue to cultivate uh, so that you might cause it to grow. Yes, Lord. Trust your will today, Father. We thank you right now. Father, we ask that you would continue to bless these brothers. Yeah. Father, we don't want to uh, become separated, Father. We don't want to become disconnected, Father. So we pray, my Father, that uh, in this season, uh, that we'll continue to take root in your word, Father, that we'll continue, Father, to seek your presence in our lives, Father. Father, we ask that you would manifest yourself in us, Father, in new ways, gracious Master. Father, help us, Father, to continue to be a shining light. Help us to continue to be the salt of the earth, Father. Help mm -hmm. us, Father, continue to Continue to lead those, Father, yes. 
who know you're not in a part of their sins. Right. Your Savior, Father, who Father who can change everything, Father, in their lives, Father. So just have your way today. Thank you right now. We ask that you continue to bless Pastor Washington and bless each and every brother here this evening. Uh -huh. Father, and as we uh, uh, leave each other's presence, Father, and leave your presence this evening, Father, we just uh, leave this place, Father. We just ask that we not leave your presence, that you would just be with us, Father, and continue to guide and strengthen us. And we'll continue to give you the praise, honor, and glory. It's in Christ Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 Johnson. As a kingdom man, I stand. As a kingdom man, I stand. To acknowledge my position in Christ. To acknowledge my position in Christ. My place in my home. My place in my home. My potential service in my church. My potential for service in my church. And my purpose in the world. And my purpose in the world. As a kingdom man, I stand. As, As a kingdom, kingdom man, man I stand. stand to acknowledge my position in Christ. To acknowledge my position in Christ. Christ. A place in my home. A place, a place in my, place in my home. home. My potential for service in my church. My, my potential for service in my church. church. And my purpose in the world. In my, my purpose, purpose in the world. world. God bless you all. Have a happy Christmas Amen. and happy New Year. Oh, Happy you guys birthday in January. Thank you all so much. Thank Amen. you for coming. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you all so much. Thank you. All right.